Can you believe it is the last video of the year? Well done everybody on getting through another year of just carnage. <laughs> We thrived with everything that was thrown at us. Surviving was just, was thriving. <laughs> if you just did the bare minimum this year, I salute you. For my last video of the year, I've put together a compilation of all my favorite videos. Sometimes if I'm hitting off feeling like, oh, I didn't do like much, I'll actually like put off looking back because I'm like, uh. And actually it was really nice to put this video together because I actually looked back and seeing the things that I had achieved and like even if it was just like little projects or whatever, I was like, God, that kept me sane. So thank you because every week I knew I had to show up on a Thursday and I would have to show up with something new, a project or whatever. No one that I had that like, unspoken contract with you <laughs> kept me going kept me sane and yeah here's the creativity keeping us sane in this uncertain time now if you are new to my channel and you have just stumbled across this video i hope you enjoy the videos that you've seen please do hit that subscribe button because i'm hoping there will be plenty more of where that came from in 2022 you can also go to my channel page hit the videos and you can see all my recent uploads and then if you like what you see welcome to the community do hit that subscribe button so you get notified of future videos but i do upload every thursday and for my regular viewers i'd love to know is there a video I think I have 11 videos here. Um, is there a video that you loved that I didn't include that I did this year? And with the YouTube algorithm, sometimes a lot of stuff just gets missed um, and people don't get notifications. My brother actually said it to me last week. He's like, did you not upload video? And I was like, I did, yeah. He's like, I didn't get a notification. And I was like, you watch my videos? He's like, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably like the only boy who watches my videos. So yeah, sometimes that happens YouTube, even if you have the bell notification on, you don't get served it. So there may be some videos to catch up on because next week I will not have a video because I'm gonna have a rest. Creativity is like a muscle. You do need to rest it to make it stronger. I don't know who said that. I have been saying that. Can we turn it into a quote? I don't know. Anyway, happy, happy new year. I will see you all in 2022 and I'll be back the second week of January with a fresh video. Let's start with painting the piece. So I'm using the four drawer Hemnes shoe cabinet. You'll notice on the IKEA website that they come in a couple of different sizes, but I'm using the one that has four drawers and not two. So I'm starting by prepping my piece. I'm using some degreaser. So even though I'm painting it disassembled, it may just have a bit of dust and dirt on it from transporting. So I'm giving it a clean and a light sanding. I'm just giving it a little scuff because I want the primer and the paint to have something to like adhere to so a light scratching i'm not sanding it back bare and i'm just wiping off any dust i'm going to apply one coat of primer i'm using prime 2 by color trend and i'm going to use a roller to apply this to get a nice smooth finish you can use a little brush if you need to do any of the sides or difficult corners but one of the perks about painting disassembled is you get to have that nice perfect finish make sure to allow your primer and your paint to fully dry between coats it can be really tempting to kind of reapply and um, but if you reapply too quickly that is when you'll notice paint lifting off you need to let it do its thing and let it fully dry between coats If you look closely, you will see Pepsi's paw mark on my panel. <laughs> so here's the top coat. It is a yummy a green color. I'm just obsessed with green um, the past year. So this is called Keystone and I'm using an eggshell finish. So it's going to be a really durable finish. I'm going to apply two coats of the eggshell um, finish, but you can also get this color in satin um, or gloss. I went for eggshell because it's going into the hallway, so it's a high traffic area. I want to be able to clean it, wipe it down, and I want it to hopefully not chip. So eggshell is quite durable if you want to avoid chipping. 
I applied two coats and again make sure to allow enough drying time. So here is a little tip. You need to be careful when you are assembling your piece. So because this is freshly painted, you have to allow your piece of furniture to cure so paint needs to cure and that can take a few days now I assembled mine the next day when it was dry but I just took extra care to make sure that I didn't chip the paint so just because paint is dry it can still be prone to chipping within the first kind of two weeks so you need to allow it to cure For safety, you need to anchor this into the wall. So I am drilling into a concrete wall. So I'm just using my hammer drill and I'm marking out where the two holes, so there's like a piece of wood at the back and I'm just using a pencil to mark the two holes and then gonna drill a hole, pop in a wall plug and then screw it in and this is nice and secure. Blondie health and safety officer. She always makes sure I have my goggles on. So I just drilled it in, secured it, and that was it, nice and secure into the wall, and then you slot in the drawers. The original handles or knobs for this piece are actually made from metal so I just use some gold or rub and buff. I love this stuff. I have a pot of this for god knows how long. I'm actually using an old concealer brush to put on the rub and buff. This is just giving it a nice gold sheen. If this dries really quickly you can do two coats but I actually just did one and you can just give it a nice little buff to bring up the shine and I then stuck them onto each door frame. I just screwed them on and then I slotted them into the piece. So now for the fun part which is styling my hallway. So I added a round mirror. I am newly obsessed with round mirrors. I just think they're really nice. I'm actually watching a YouTube video on how to put up the Stockholm Ikea mirror. So this is the Stockholm round Ikea mirror. I think it's 80 centimeters. It's the larger size and I'm just putting it um, above the unit just because I want it to, I love how mirrors just add a bit of light to like a small hallway again I'm drilling into concrete so I just made sure that I had a screw on either side drilled into the wall and then you just hang it up so it's all about the measurements because the back of this it's not like an easy kind of hook there's like one either side so you really have to kind of measure so I gave it a clean up and then I popped some trinkets on top. So the good thing about this unit is I need it for like practicality. So shoes, um, I like, I have shoes in the hot press and random places. So it's great to be able to come in and pop them in. But I also want it to look pretty too. Another thing that I'm using it for is you'll see me pop a basket on the shelf. And although the basket looks pretty, it's actually practical as well because I have clean face masks in it because I have a habit of going out and kind of forgetting them. Um, so I have them in the basket and then I can just put dirty ones straight into the washing machine. And I also just have some hand sanitizer as well. So it's kind of like a little hidden sanitized station um, for, for the times we are in.
I'm popping down a little rug just because I thought it would make it feel a bit more cozy. Um, I'm using the stop rug stop stopper. Is that what it would be called? Basically, it stops the rug from slipping, and it actually does work because um, a rug in the hallway when you come in definitely will be a slip hazard. But this stops it from slipping. That rug is from Wayfair. And I got it like last year. I love, love, love the pattern of it. And I love how it fits in the hallway. Um, I'm still kind of on the fence on the rug because I have a feeling I'm going to have to wash it often because like this is my hallway and it's winter and it gets quite muddy. But it's there for now. So let me know what you think. Um, it just fits it kind of perfect. Now I left the Love Heart little mat because that is handy for wiping your shoes um so i don't know about having the two of them but that little love heart mat i got in aldi years ago like six or seven years ago and it's handy for just wiping kind of if your feet are wet or if you have like mud on your feet Here's a look at the mirror. So I actually got this off a friend who was passing it on because sometimes it's hard to get nice items for free in Ireland unless someone is passing it on. Like it's rare that people would kind of leave stuff on the curb like they do in the US and Canada. So keep an eye on the secondhand sites and friends and family as well. Also Blondie, she's always a messer. She always makes upcycling more fun. So, another thrifted find for free. I'm getting good with the thrifts lately. I'm just getting lucky. So, love this mirror. Love the shape. Nice and heavy. Good quality. I don't know what is underneath. This paint feels matte, but I don't know if it's like undercoat or if it's chalk. It doesn't feel like it's waxed, which is really good. So, I mostly use like satin paint and you can't just put satin over chalk paint if there's wax. You have to like remove wax because it's not going to stick to wax. So I don't think I need to do a big massive strip on this. And um, as you see like there's like chalk or paint around this. This should come off easy enough I hope. It's sunny outside. I'm going to take it out to the garden with a big bucket of warm soapy water. And I'm just going to wash it and just see what's underneath. Um, I am going to paint it because my, my mission is to have it for the living room. I'll show you my mantle. Um, it was looking a bit bare, but let's have a look. So ideally, I want the mirror to possibly go up here. Um, if you watched my like living room updated video, you'd saw I got like those cabinets in in January. And... Yeah, I think the mirror might look nice up here. This was, um, if you watched my video, this was just bare and I just left this up. But I would like to maybe, I don't know, add a little something something. So in terms of colour, I was thinking to possibly paint it the same as the fireplace. But I'm not sure if I have much of that paint left. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is go out to the garden and give it a good clean, see what's underneath and then just follow my usual kind of prep and prime. Now when it's a piece like a mirror, um, not that I don't do as much prep or like detailed work um, compared to like a piece of furniture. I'm always like harping on about like a good prep and prime with a piece of furniture but when it's something decorative kind of like a mirror you can kind of be a bit, I don't know, a bit more experimental um, because it's not 
like it's a smaller piece. So I'm gonna bring it to the garden, give it a good clean, see what's underneath, and then see what paint I have. Um, I might use, I think I might have some of this fireplace paint left over. I might be able to use it. I'm just using warm fairy washing up liquid and a metal scrubby brush to clean as much of the paint off the glass as I can. I'm also just giving it a good scrub to remove any wax. Now it doesn't feel like there is wax on it. I don't think it was chalk paint that was on this piece. Um, so I'm just getting it as clean and as smooth as I can. And then I'm gonna prime it and then paint it to match my fireplace. So I'm going to use, I feel like a, a makeup YouTuber, <laughs> a concealer brush. Oh, it won't zoom. I don't know, but basically I'm going to use a little concealer brush, this gold paint on it, to get in to the nitty gritty. So don't worry if you don't have little um, tiny paint brushes to do detailed work. You can just use old makeup brushes. Don't reuse them on your face. Um, and a moment of appreciation for, this is the first spring day I've been able to be in the garden doing a project and it's sunny. Like it's not overly warm, but it's not freezing either. And just a moment of gratitude that the weather is changing and the, we had the solstice, didn't we? Waiting for the clocks to change. That's happening soon, I must check. So bright, sunny evenings are upon us. Guess who spoke too soon? <laughs> it started to rain. I was just eating my lunch and I was like, it's sunny and raining at the same time. Irish weather, Irish weather. The color I'm using to paint the mirror is Cherished White and it's in a satin finish paint and it's by Color Trend. This is the exact same shade of paint that is on my fireplace. So I'm hoping that by painting them, the same shade that they'll kind of look like they're not a set but it'll kind of just they, it won't look as second hand then i also tried to clean as much of the old paint off the glass of the mirror but it actually was giving it a kind of an antique look and um, you know that kind of when mirrors get that speckled age look but i did try and clean off as much of the old paint as i could and yeah i think it it just looks nice and clean now Sweetness could reach everyone, there'd be no wars. Maybe the birds will sing about your heart. Maybe the trees will whisper the word. Maybe the sun will spread your joy to the ones who lost their hope. I'm just reusing what I already have to dress up my mantelpiece for spring. I like to shop from my house um, and try not to bring in like too many new pieces each season and I just try and reuse what I have and just use it in different ways. So I've popped the mirror up and then I just styled the bits and pieces that I already had around it. Some of these pieces I had in different rooms um, but when I redid the living room with the cabinets either side I brought them into the room because they just matched the wallpaper. Also that wallpaper is Laura Ashley 
I put it up about six or seven years ago and I think Laura Ashley may have closed but you may be able to get it on the likes of Amazon or secondhand sites. There is no one who has a heart as pure, no, not like yours. So in here I have two Ikea doors. They are half glass, half non-glass. They're not the Leotorp ones, but they're kind of same vibe, but smaller. And I just got, I think I got three baskets. Why three? Such an uneven number. Oh, because I thought maybe I'd only fit three going across, but I probably should have got four. I like an even number and then I just got some hinges so that's what I got it was 25 euro each for each door so that's 50 quid I think the baskets were a tenner and then the little hinges were like a euro so my plan is to pimp the built-in wardrobe that's upstairs with new windows organize a basket and make it pretty so up the stairs and around here I've got this wardrobe so this is my drawer of doom and it's made it's all home decor pieces things oh god this looks so much worse on camera <laughs> my plan is there is i don't know if you can like see i'm sorry i have the hiccups as well there's um baskets in there that's like full of stuff and my goal is like this is good st stuff like this is stuff that you know i'm hanging on to like some of it is props like I'll notice there's a bit of Christmas stuff. Baby, baby Yoda. I don't know why baby Yoda is there. The goal is to have baskets containing my stuff at the bottom, all the way up, and then this top shelf, cause it's like the like the bungalow angle. I have to, that's, I got smaller baskets to kind of go in there. So the goal is motivation for me to keep it tight. <laughs> After I had done the not fun task of organizing and clearing everything out, I removed my old doors and then I cleaned the inside and I decided to paint the inside in like a kind of contrasting color. So you'll notice that the inside is good old magnolia, which was once the color that was all over my house. So I had some paint left over from when I did the little stair makeover with the Ikea rugs and I used the same paint that I use on the handrail and it's a nice little contrasting color. It's kind of like a sagey green color but it kind of looks a little bit gray as well but it picks up on the color of the mirror and to be honest I didn't have enough white paint to paint the inside white so I didn't want to waste paint and buy more so I just used up what I had and thankfully I had enough to paint the inside and then once it was all dried I then moved on to fitting the new doors
it is day two, my paint has dried, my work area is really messy so I'm gonna put everything in and then stick the doors on because I don't know if you can see, let me take the camera off. I just have a really small workspace <laughs> and I just need to put the baskets in, this is tidy, then I can just stick the doors on, I need to cut an inch off the bottom of the door. So I'm gonna do that because I can't kind of work in mess. Let me know if you're the same. Sorry, my tripod just fell down. Um, let me know if you are the same. So I've put the first door on off camera because I had to wrestle. So I'm gonna have a gap, but I think I have a solution. So that is the first door gone on. Not too hard to kind of stick on. I'm recycling the old clasps. I probably should have given them a clean. So that's like the old clasp from the other door. It's not too bad. I just have to fill up my mistakes <laughs> and paint over them, but not too bad. But when I close the door, now when measuring before I bought, I did know there was going to be a gap, but I didn't know if it was gonna be as big of a gap. So the other door I'm gonna stick on and then I reckon I'm gonna have like a decent kind of gap, but I have this bit of wood in my scraps. If I, do you have a gap? I could possibly put a strip of wood down the middle, but I won't know until I stick the second door on how bad my gap is gonna be. But I think I've made some good progress. Like I know it's not like, like I say, it's not Pinterest worthy, but compared to before, I've got my like display flowers on top, um, which are doubling up as a display. I've got my bits and bobs in the baskets, um, some more baskets, and I probably should get some more for there, but this is like stuff that won't fit in a basket, so I feel like a basket could be counterproductive. But anyway, let's stick the second door on and see how I'm going. So you're gonna see in a minute that I did have a gap in the middle. So I had to use the strip wood. And instead of putting the strip wood to the kind of cabinet itself, I decided to put it onto the door because that way I'm not obstructing getting things like in and out. So once I fixed that on with a couple of screws, I then popped on the handles and finito. And I don't think you kind of notice the gap. I think it looks like it's supposed to be there. So here's a little recap of, the, oh God, that before. And here's what it's looking like now. to do to give this bistro set and makeover is we're going to make a tiled top so i picked up oh i went full out with my tiling tools i bought all the good stuff so i've got a grout float a little scrapey thing don't know the technical term i have four sets of mosaic tiles all of this is from b and q and i have a sheet of mdf now the tiles are called Darina, or I'm not actually too sure the name. I tried to find a link on the B&Q website, but I bought them in the Liffey Valley store and I bought the last four of this type. Now they did have them in other colors if you do wanna head out and get them. 
I'm gonna cut a sheet of MDF to size and I'm placing the four squares of tiles which is gonna make up the top and they just fitted perfectly on it so I only had to do one cut. So I'm cutting that excess piece off and we're going to stick the tiles to this MDF, give it a little frame and grout it. Now I am using my circular saw to cut, this is actually a mini circular saw I'll pop a link to it if I can find it online and it's really handy for small jobs and it's been sitting in my tool press. I got it at Christmas and it's my first time to use it and I can't believe it was my first time to use it. So I'm using Ready Mixed. It's actually cheaper to buy the big bag of adhesive and grow but because this was a small job, see that's how they make money on us when you're just doing a small job. So I bought a pot of like ready mixed adhesive and grout. I think it was only 10 euro for this size of pot. So this is my first time to do this. You can probably tell. So I'm kind of smoothing it on like you would bake a cake, like you would do a bit of icing. Um, I'm probably not using even enough, but it's done the job. So. I tiled the top of the MDF, I put the adhesive on, I spread it out as much as I could. It's like harder than it looks and I stuck all the tiles down. I used little spacers where I needed them and I let this dry overnight before working on it then the next day and applying the grout and all of that good stuff. While the tiles are doing the thing, I decided to tackle the actual bones of the restro set. So I'm power washing the wood because I am going to be using some oil on the pieces of wood to lighten them. And I'm also going to be painting the frame. So the good old power washer came out to get rid of all of that grime because these poor table and chairs are always left outside and I never bring them in in winter which you know what they're holding up well considering so I just removed all of the slats because I wanted to paint the frame now this Ikea set does come in different colors so you can buy it I think there's like white red I actually think there is a green but we are going to paint this in the lovely sagey green that is already in the greenhouse if you saw my Ikea Ivar makeover from last week we are going to be using some leftover paint to prep the base for painting, I gave it a light sanding and I wiped off any excess grit and dust after cleaning it and then I gave it two coats of the Authentico Versant Matte Paint in the shade Kiwi. So it's the same one that I used in last week's project. Gave it two coats of paint, let it dry and don't forget to let it cure. So day two, back to my tile table. So I am attempting to make a frame for the tabletop just to give it that little bit of something, something. So I, you'll see me using a hand miter box and saw because I was too lazy to take out my actual miter saw. And I was halfway through doing it and I was like, no, I'm taking out the electric much quicker like I was just being lazy so I cut four pieces of trim to size and I use wood glue to stick them on you'll see I bring in the tabletop because it was just easier to do it on 
the tabletop so I put the pieces of trim on, lined them up flush to the tile and I'm just using a few um, nail gun tacks just to secure it to the MDF. Just be careful not to get it into the tile, you don't want to crack your tile. So wood glue, some tacks and then yeah she was good to go and I just used some wood filler on the corners and anywhere where the little nail guns tacks had gone in I used some filler just to hide them I didn't do a perfect job on the trim I seen a trick online and it said instead of cutting your angles at a 45 degree cut them at a 43 degree that way you can trim them and you'll get a nicer kind of connection if that makes sense So my favourite part of the project is grouting. This is my first time to grout and it is it is as fun as it looks. So I am smushing the grout. It's, it's like baking a cake. So I'm smushing it into the crevices and don't be, I was afraid to use too much. And don't be afraid to use like as much grout as you need. I smushed it all in, I scraped away like any excess and then I let it kind of set and I wiped any excess that's on the tile with a sponge and then the next day when it was all dry I just went in and gave it a good polish. I just polished it with some like vinegar and water cleaning solution that I used and that got any of the like leftover grout off of the tile and gave it a nice shiny polish. Each of the wooden slats I'm going to be applying a product by Authentico called Grandiose and this is like a wax oil so it is it's not like paint but it applies just as easily but you do have to follow some extra safety precautions when using this product so I wanted to lighten the wood but also give it some protection because I did actually whitewash these last year with some paint and it just didn't last so this product will give it a bit of protection as well I actually want to use it possibly on the wood in the greenhouse but I wanted to, to, to test it out on like a smaller project just to see what it looks like and how it wears so the cure time on this is longer and it dries in 24 hours so if you it's not like paint in the way that paint will dry quite quickly but you can see the difference here between the wood effects so I left them to dry before assembling everything back together and we are almost finished <laughs>
let me draw a very bad picture of what I am trying to achieve. So essentially I'm kind of making like a shelf. So it's gonna have a box shape with a roof on top and then two shelves on the inside. I'm then gonna have mesh on the front. There's not gonna be a back to this because I want to have the pieces removable. It's gonna go against a wall. So you can get an extra sheet of wood if you would like to put a back into this. I'm going to be using some outdoor timber. You can use scrap wood or pallet wood if you have anything lying around. I recommend just using what you have to create this, but I did pick up some outdoor wood from my local. The first thing I had to do was measure, 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 measure twice and cut once. That's the name of the game. So I had to measure all of my pieces of wood and try and cut them as straight as I could before I assembled them. You can also use a handsaw, it is obviously much easier if you've got the power tools but you can use a handsaw to cut your wood and just be careful and if you're not confident using tools, ask someone to help you. I also chopped up these cubes because I'm going to be using these square cubes to put holes into them for the bees which you will see later on and I'm just playing around with the layout. Originally I was going to have like an even space between the shelves but I decided to mix it up and do different heights so I could fit more or less in each little box. You'll see that I'm using a nail gun. This is just because I'm by myself and it was just easier to tack in the frame into position before I screwed it into place. I do recommend using screws as well because the nail guns, like they're not overly secure. You can use like wood glue as well, but I went for nails and then I used some decking screws. These are special screws that are designed for decking and for using outdoors so that they don't rust as easy as if you use like normal brass or metal. And I secured two screws into each corner and this is nice and sturdy. I did the exact same for placing the two shelves inside but I'm just measuring as I'm going. If you have a helper it would be amazing because they could kind of hold the wood in place for you because as I did dart the nail gun in I noticed that the other side of the wood shifted so I'm just measuring as I'm doing it so that I'm even and not wonky all the way around and again I'm just using screws as well as my nail gun. To put the roof on was very confusing because I was like, how am I actually going to stick this on? So I measured the two sides. I'm just measuring like where I want it to finish so that it's even on both sides. And then I cut the wood to side and just on the angle on top, I used my nail gun and my screw to first stick those two pieces together. And then I used a screw on either corner to stick it down, which I don't know if it's ideal. It's stuck on, but I was a bit confused as to how I was going to stick it on. Probably not the best way, but it's on. I'm just applying some chicken wire to the front. You can pick up this chicken wire in the likes of, I actually got it in the garden section in B&Q, but you'll get it in most hardware stores. And I just cut it to size. I use my pliers to trim it and I'm sticking it on by using a staple gun. This is actually the front of my B Airbnb because I don't want the birds getting at it. So the back is open, but this is going to be mounted onto a wall. So it just means I can lift it off and access it and then lift it back on. Here are some of the stuff that I'm putting inside and I am going to drill holes into these for the bees. So I did read that I think it's four inches and six inches in depth. If you have too many shallow holes, it will encourage an imbalance in gender. So I think male bees don't need as deep of a burrow than female bees. 
don't quote me but I made sure to mix it up with different depths for each little burrow um, and I tried to make them as kind of consistent and uniform as I could and the drill bit I'm using I did actually go to see if there was like a size on my drill bit I think it said it was a number six I'm not sure what that is in like diameter but it's like a medium size drill bit and I'm just drilling straight down and I have like lots of kind of fluff or sawdust you'll notice gathers in the middle so you can just give it another little drill to get any of the debris out. I'm just assembling my bee house but you can get really creative and use different size logs. I was just using kind of what I had to hand. I didn't have time to kind of go and forage for some extra things but I do have some space in mind that I can add to it so you could get some maybe logs or sticks when you're on your walk and bring them home and drill some holes into them and then pop them in. Your bee house also needs to be secure so I am securing mine to the wall where my bar is and I'm just giving it a little clean. Now I decided against painting my bee house because I wanted it to be as natural as I could. Um, I don't think bees mind if it's painted but I didn't want to have any more kind of chemicals but I wanted to decorate it so I decided to use my Cricut machine and I printed off some vinyl. I created this design in the design space and I have it saved to my account. I'm sure there's a way for me to share this design. Maybe if I download it as a an SVG um, and then I'll try figure out how I can share it maybe on my blog but I'm just cutting it on some vinyl and I'm using some extra pressure so more pressure with the vinyl and then I cut it out I weeded it I'm still getting to like the hang of cutting vinyl with the Cricut if you saw my Cricut video from a couple of uploads ago so I'm just using the brayer or I call it the squeegee um, to get all of the vinyl off and then I'm going to transfer it onto the wood and I did this on both sides so I just printed off my design twice and then I stuck it to the wood gave it a nice good squeegee before lifting it off and yeah I love it I love how it turned out because it just gives it that extra little bit of detail and um, so I didn't have to like paint it and I love how the white vinyl like really pops against the brown wood To make my bee bar, I picked up some pebbles from the garden centre and a tray. I was originally looking for a terracotta tray or a plate but they didn't have any and the purpose of this is it just helps the insects to get a drink without them drowning because you'll notice if you have buckets of water they can fall in and drown especially the bees so this way they can have a drink and not drown so they can have a safe drink beside the Airbnb. Here is the piece I got for free, absolute bargain, bit rough around the edges. So I think it was originally a navy hem nez piece and it's got like white, I think satin, it doesn't seem to be gloss paint on top. Ta 
as you can see blondie was not impressed so it's rough around the edges it's got some chipped paint but this is a diamond in the rough i'm gonna have to do a bit of work on the handles but nothing we can't fix well hello i have to make an absolute mess now of my office so this hem is here i got for free you can't get any more of a bargain than free. And behind me, I have Calyx earrings. And the goal is, or my vision, I'm gonna insert a picture here to what I'm trying to achieve. I've measured it out and it should work. So the two Calyx units are gonna sit on top of this, this hemnes and it's gonna look like a built-in wall unit and I'm going to put some like beading and um, what would you call it, like wood molding around the like gaps. There should be a five centimeter gap on top. I measured like loads of times, so I hope it, everything just looks bigger when it's in the room. According to my calculations, I've got five centimeters to play with on top, which I hope, please God, those five centimeters are there. So what I have to do now is I need to move them calyx units behind me, but they are full of all my stuff that needs to come out. It's gonna be a mess. I need to just move them like over here and then get this Hemnes unit against the wall so I can see kind of what I am working with and I'm also going to have to reconfigure if this works the calyx units so as you can see I've got like drawers up high but with that up high the drawers are going to be like way too high I'm too small so I'm going to have to reconfigure them to be down the bottom which is not fun it just means a lot of stuff has to come out a lot of stuff has to you know but what is the phrase? You gotta crack an egg to make an omelette. So that's what I'm gonna do. So now I'm going to maneuver things around the room and work on my positioning before I even think about giving this piece a makeover. This is gonna need just a little bit of work. It's not actually that bad. Um, the paint seems to be like a satin paint on top. So I'm gonna have to do a bit of sand and have primer and paint. And it's gonna look good. Stick with me, stick with me. So the first thing I had to do was empty out those calyx units that were full of craft stuff. But do you know what? I needed to actually properly organize them because I was starting to get a bit messy. If you have watched my declutter videos, you'll know that I'm a fan of opening drawers, stuffing things in them, closing them, and then just dealing, dealing with it when I need to. So I took everything out of the calyx units and they are gonna sit on top of the hemness. So I positioned it because I I needed like a clear kind of space to work in. So I did the layout first. So I put the hemnes against the wall and then I had to get help putting the two calyx units that I already had on top. Make sure to secure them to the wall, but you can just play around with the layout before you secure them to the wall. So this is where I caused absolute carnage. So I had to take everything out to put it all together and then I put everything back in because I'm only painting the outside of the cabinets. So I'm not painting like the inside. I always am amazed by how much stuff I can fit into one drawer. I think it's it, it's it's a talent of me squishing things into presses. It's a talent, like I said before, that I don't need, but I have it. Um, so this was the carnage before I sorted it. <laughs> Blondie, she is judging me, but it worked out. So as I have got everything up, um, I'm gonna obviously secure this to the wall because the last thing we want is a cat jumping up there and bang. I don't really get earthquakes in Ireland, thank God, because my house would be smashed in a minute with all the teacups. Oh, I have to secure this. But I was thinking of my like configuration behind me, so I obviously have to put the, um, I have to finish putting the drawers down, which are still a good height for me, because I'm really short, um, so I can see in. 
and then I obviously have a cube that I can put up here. I don't know whether to put the cube back in here or leave it with a basket. Either way, I'm gonna have to use my ladder to kind of get up here. So I'm gonna put the stuff that I don't always use up high. Uh, um, and I was thinking of using the top cube to put the likes of like my YouTube badge and awards. Or will I just use it as complete storage? And that will free up space. And then if I want, I can put like YouTube plaques and whatever um they can kind of go like on a shelf so i'm kind of playing around with that i'm also procrastinating because i mean look at this look at this i have to organize through this but i'll get there it's really handy to actually reconfigure your Calex units. Um, so you just use your drill to rearrange them. Now you will have to fill any holes from when you take them out if you are leaving them blank. So you can just use some wood filler, lightly sand it, and then you're going to be painting as well. So they are handy enough to reconfigure. It might just take you half an hour or so, but it's totally worth it because as you can see, them drawers are now the perfect size for me. There was two drawers that were damaged, but they came with the missing pieces. So I wasn't missing anything. So all I had to do was slide the base back into this piece. So because I've made some Ikea stuff, I kind of had a rough idea on how to fix this. So I popped it back in, drilled it on, and that was that one fixed. And then I also had to fix the side rail on the other one. So don't be disheartened if you see an Ikea piece that's a bit bashed because you can fix them. The bottom hemnes part of this unit I'm actually using for kind of my heavier stuff. The drawers are lovely and deep and you can fit a lot in them. So I've got like my paints um, down the bottom in the kind of like heavier drawers and then I've got like the smaller kind of like tester pots and craft stuff. And then for the upper pieces I'm just using things the likes of my drill bit. <laughs> There's Blondie again. She was totally not happy but she just stayed with me the whole time when I was cleaning. <laughs> It took me about half a day to get all of this stuff kind of sorted through and put away in order, but I can happily report that it's all been put away in order. I know where everything is and it's nice and organized. I was also playing around with the configuration and I decided to go with baskets on top. Now, this obviously isn't the final piece, but I just wanted to show you kind of what I went for. Now I am prepping the piece and you guys know that I am all about the prep. So I took off all of the handles because they are going to be getting sprayed the one shade. And then I'm just using degreaser. You've seen me do this in lots of my videos. I am always harping on about a good like clean and a prime. So I cleaned down the whole piece, especially the bottom unit because I don't know kind of like what grime that kind of had on it. There was like a bit of a build up. I also had to sand within the room. You'll see that I have like dust sheets over everything and I also have the extractor on my sander. It's not ideal, but I did have all of the windows open, dust sheets down, wore a mask and I hoovered it all up straight away, but there wasn't actually a lot of dust because I was using the extractor on the sander. So I just made sure to sand smooth the old paint. So where there was any kind of buildup or chips and there was also some wood filler on certain parts of the piece so I'm not sanding the back bare but I'm getting it as smooth as I can before I apply the primer. To prime the piece I am using the Insulux paint brand which is one of the paint brands by Benjamin Moore. This primer has really good adhesion, especially for difficult surfaces. It actually says it will stick to the likes of tiles and PVC. It's perfect for painting IKEA furniture because the bottom hemnes is a solid wood, but the top calyx is more of a shiny coated surface. So I need a primer that's gonna give me good adhesion on both surfaces. I applied one coat of primer all the way around. Now I did actually on the spots where you can see the navy paint coming in, I just went over them slightly. So those little patches did kind of get two coats, but one coat is absolutely perfect. And then I just allowed it to fully dry, came back the next day and went in with my top coat. <laughs> Thank you. 
So for painting furniture, the Benjamin Moore Advanced is what you need. You can use this on cabinetry, on pieces of furniture. I went for the satin finish because I personally like that, but you can get it in different finishes. And the color, I went for pale oak. It's a lovely, like warm, I wouldn't even say a beige. It's kind of like a warm white, but it just looks so nice and as you can see i have like the green wall in the room and i just think it's a nice they complement each other another thing i like about this paint color is the lighting so i get sunshine in the afternoon which is really nice and kind of like a sunset and i notice that this color can look nice and warm and um, and i just love a paint color that like does that I also gave it two coats of this top coat and the coverage was so good. You'll notice that I got a large tin of paint. I got a gallon, a quart is all I needed, but hey, I now have lots of that shade that I can use on other pieces in the house. For my handles, I wanted them all the gold shade, but the same gold shade. So I went in with a primer and then a gold spray paint and I reused the gold handles that was on it when I got it. I had to drill some holes for some of the pieces because they had been filled in. So I drilled them in, assembled all of the handles and as you can see, it just looks so expensive. It just ties the whole thing together. Now to add some trim to give it that faux built-in look. So I had this trim, I actually bought this trim last year um, because I wanted to do faux paneling, but I will be totally honest, I can't get my head around angles. So I um, it took me a while to configure the angles for this, but I thought, you know what, it's a good project to start with, and I had enough wood to make a mistake. I only made one mistake when I cut my pieces too short. So once I figured out the angles, I painted them, I popped on some primer, and then at the same, I popped on two coats of the advanced it was just easier for me to paint them and then stick them on and then I could just paint over them again like a detailed area so where I had um, used any wood filler I could just paint over them again. <laughs> To apply the pieces to the unit, I used a bead of glue with my gun and also my nail gun. And I then just used some filler to fill in any of the gaps from the nail gun. To give it that polished look, I also used a bead of caulk all the way around it just to seal it and kind of marry it to the piece. And I just think it looks so professional. I then moved on to the top and I applied the trim to the top because I had got like five centimeter gap and I just thought it's just gonna make it look like it's an actual built-in and not two Ikea pieces like stuck together. I did contemplate putting some skirting board on the bottom. So there is like the legs of the Hemnes piece. I am tempted. The reason why I didn't do it in the video is because I actually couldn't source any skirting board. The ones that I did find were too thick. So I wanted something that was a bit thinner. So it is something I could consider, but I still think it looks really good without the skirting on the bottom. Once all the paint was dry and I had two coats, I then styled it and the baskets that you see at the next shot, they're actually from Ikea, but I had them like kind of knocking about the house already um, and I had enough to put into the unit. So I didn't go with any trophies or YouTube badges in the storage presses above. I just went with baskets because they're practical for storage and they just look nice. 
I then started the big office cleanup, but it wasn't too bad because I had created storage with the storage wall, so I had a place for everything to go. Now I do still have to do a bit of organization for my power tools. I have them in the wardrobe um, that you might have seen in the room and I do need to give them some more shelving so that I can better kind of grab them. They're kind of on top of each other at the moment, but that is for another day and another video. So the concrete base that I am going to be doing the faux brick effect on is the base for my greenhouse. This was laid a couple of weeks ago and I'm just doing a quick recap for anyone who missed it. So I had to remove the wooden frame from the concrete base. I gave it a power wash and one sunny day last week, I painted it in white masonry paint. So it's like a creamy white shade and it is a Santex masonry paint and it was just some paint that I had left over. I applied two coats of this Santex paint and I actually have this paint on my wall. There's like little grains of sand or something in it but I do recommend it for walls. So I was like, you know what, if it was good for the walls, I'll try it out on the base. So I painted the whole base cream, let it dry and then I did the faux brick effect. I actually got this idea of Martha Stewart because I had seen people on Instagram, a couple of guys had tagged me in people's greenhouses and they had stenciled the floor. And I was like, I really want a brick floor. And I did look at reclaimed brick, but they're really expensive. I think it was about 400 to 500 euro just for the brick um, to do a reclaimed brick floor. So then I was like, there has to be an easier way. And I came across a Martha Stewart video. Originally, I had looked up and Googled like brick stenciled, came across her video and it was she had made her own stencil with sponges. So she had stuck sponges in a row. So I'm slightly doing it different because I'm doing it brick by brick, painstakingly brick by brick. And I'm just doing it by eye as well. I'm not like measuring it the exact gap in between. I go a bit wonky in some corners, but I think it adds to that kind of cottage old cobbled brick like if you notice like they're not perfect so I literally used a masonry paint in a red brick shade and I bought a tester pot of a darker shade and I'm just dabbling it in and as I place the sponge you'll see there's like white kind of gaps and I left them because they were giving me that like vintage like brick vibe like you could cut up a smaller sponge to make it like more perfect if you wanted to good morning day two brickwork so I was just catching up on comments from last week's video where there was a heat wave in that one. It's still a heat wave, it's great. Um, not great when you're trying to brick, paint brick on the base of a thing. Um, but like Ireland, like we can't survive if we're in the late twenties. Like I think it was 31 degrees one of the days. So that's like the hottest, like shocking hot. Loads of you guys were like, girl, 27, 30 degrees. Try being like 41 and 43. No, Ireland could not do that. <laughs> We'd have a national emergency if it was that hot. 
So I'm going out to finish the other side of the brick. It's a new day. I basically have to time it so that the base is in shade or I'll die. <laughs> and also the assembler is supposed to be coming tomorrow to assemble the greenhouse. The greenhouse is sittingly, sittingly, currently sitting in my front garden on a crate and I've I've been like, I hope no one robs that. Now you'd need a forklift to rob it, but you wouldn't know who'd rob your greenhouse around here. <laughs> so, um, he's coming tomorrow to assemble it, so I need to finish the brick today. So I just gotta do it. I'm gonna have an audible on my phone and I'm just gonna put the blinkers on. Lots of water, lots of fizzy drinks. We're gonna paint this brick. And it's Friday as I'm doing this, which means Gardener's World is on tonight. Cheeky bottle of Guinness, cause I'll have well earned it from finished this brick. Could you imagine trying to paint the brick with the greenhouse on top of the brick and me in the greenhouse in a heat wave trying to assemble it? I actually feel bad for the assembler tomorrow, but in fairness, I'm sure the greenhouse assembly, I'll try and get a few clips. I'm sure it's all outside and it'll be in a shady spot when he's assembling during the day. Okay, enough talking. I'm just talking because I'm procrastinating putting off doing it. So in terms of time, it took me roughly, I would say six hours, but spread across like two days. So I did one half the previous day, and then it took me about two and a half, three hours to finish it off. And I had to kind of wait for certain sections to dry um, so I could finish it. So I kind of re recommend doing it in halves, but because it was a heat wave, the paint was drying so quickly. Now, I also want to talk about sealing. So I haven't done it yet because the greenhouse came and I need to do it, but I am going to use a clear water-based external varnish. So the likes of a yacht varnish, but I'm gonna do like, I want to find one that's matte and just make sure that it's water-based and not oil-based because if it's oil-based, it can tend to turn yellow. So I am gonna seal this because I really do. It took me so long to do that. I want it to last. So a clear water-based varnish, that is on my to-do list. Um, but thankfully, like it hasn't had much traffic yet and the guys have assembled the greenhouse and there was no like damage to the floor. So I do wanna protect this. So that's just a little tip. If you are doing something like this, you can seal it as well. So oh, the shelving that I am putting into the greenhouse is the IKEA Ivar system. So the one I got is there's two Ivar cabinets on the bottom and then there is the shelving on top. So this fits perfectly in the greenhouse and I am going to be giving it a paint makeover. Of course I am. So I'm using this color. It's called Kiwi by Authentico and I'm using the Versant Matte range which has a built-in primer. It's self-sealing. You don't have to do anything with this. So there is primer built in. Now if you want you can like add primer to the knots in the wood um, but I have used this paint on multiple things and I haven't had any bleed through so I'm applying two coats now this took me all day I'd say this took me about five hours um, I gave it two coats of paint the IKEA Ivar units does drink a lot of paint so just giving you the heads up what you can do is you can give them like an undercoat or a coat of primer and that might help it like whenever you paint bare wood it is ideal to give it like a prime and then that won't it'll stop it absorbing all of your paint and there is a primer built in with this paint and I only needed to do two coats but I did find that the pine was absorbing a lot of paint 
I painted all of the shelving units first and then I tackled assembling the cabinets. Do you know what? The cabinets are not actually that bad to assemble. What gave me the IKEA rage was when I had to assemble them all together in the greenhouse and I don't know what it is. It's, I just I haven't had the IKEA rage in a long time, but the Ivars drove me to it. <laughs> so I'm just following the instructions that came with the IKEA Ivar cabinets and they're actually like straight enough to follow. I did kind of have a cheeky look on YouTube to see if there was any assembly videos but it's actually quite simple to assemble the cabinets and then I gave them a paint job outside. You'll notice that I didn't put the doors on. I left the doors to last because they got a little floral makeover that you will see later in the video. So here's where the Ikea rage started to set in. I remember looking back at this, I was hangry and I just was at this all day with the painting. So I tried to assemble them on the floor because it does say it's a two man job. And I was thinking I'll assemble them on the floor and I'll lift them up. Nope, you can't do that. The screws are just not strong enough to kind of take the weight of you lifting them up. So what I did was I put them together how I wanted them. And then I, well, then I went to bed and I ate something and I came back the next day and I finished assembling them. Now the shelving units come with these straps that secure them to the wall. I had to secure them at the base. So you'll see at the cabinet, because obviously it's a glass house, like I can't drill into kind of like the frame, but I was able to drill into the wooden frame to secure them so that they're not going to be a topple risk. But the IKEA shelves do come with these little straps that you can secure them onto. Overall, I found the IKEA shelves, they're not like I don't think I'd have them inside my house. I thought they were quite flimsy, but then I put this back brace on them and it kind of strengthened them. But I still don't know how I feel about them. Now, what I am showing you here is the transfers that I'm going to be sticking onto the base of the cabinets. So it comes in two strips. Now the shop I bought them from has since sold out. So I'll see if I can find you a link on Etsy. So they're easy enough to stick on. Now when I say easy enough, they're easier than decoupage and they're probably easier than doing it on a Cricut machine. So I went, I wanted like a little meadow like effect and like I don't have much furniture inside of the house with like details like this and I just thought I could have a bit of fun in the greenhouse and it's just picking up on that like floral theme. So basically you just put them on kind of how you would with your like Cricut machine. There's like a transfer, there's a white backing sheet and then there's a front transfer sheet and it comes with this little scraper tool um, in the box and then you just stick it on, scrape it peel off the transfer tape. Now what I will say is some of the pieces lifted and it would tear but once I put the transfer tape back down 
give it a scrape it went on so I think they're really good quality and I think they were worth the money as well now they do say to seal them with some varnish so I need to get some clear matte varnish because the paint I use is a matte finish just to stick over the kind of decals and that will secure them you can also lightly sand them into the wood and um, I didn't because there wasn't much detail in the wood but um yeah I think they add a little something something to my cabinet and then I'm just drilling on the Ivar units and if you find that when you stick on the Ivar doors to the unit that they're not matching up just fiddle with the adjustment screw that is on the inside of the cabinet because I had to do that and then they matched up perfectly. I don't know if you can see but I have a tenant in the wildlife corner so that hedgehog house has been there for so long and since doing the wildlife corner we noticed that a hedgehog well when I say we my nephew noticed that a little hedgehog had moved in and he was using the house to sleep in so I'm a very proud hedgehog mama Um, I am just now potting up some plants so the greenhouse is intended to be used as a greenhouse and a workspace but I do intend to have it for seedlings and things like that but for now because of the growing season I'm just styling it up with some pots and um, I am going to do some seed trays for some anemones and then I might do a little bit of winter veg but I am just <laughs> getting rid of the evidence of some dead plants and I just picked up some annuals from the local nursery and these are kind of autumn ones so they're just violas and they're the ones they're not like the summer ones and um, I could start to see some autumn plants coming into the garden center so just for a little bit of early autumn color I know it's still kind of August and you know late summer but I just wanted to bring in a little bit of autumn vibes um, just so I can get a bit longer out of my annuals. So planted some of them for colour, planted a sunflower and then I'm just tidying up the pots that I had kind of let go. I just, yeah, I let, I let them go. Then I just styled up the shelves and the great thing about the Ivar shelves is you can move the shelves and you can add and take away. You'll notice that I took out the middle um, Ivar shelf and yeah, I got those little plates to stick on the pots to stop the wood from like rotting um, and yeah, give it a bit of longevity. So it was starting to get late in the evening as I was kind of faffing and pottering about I still need to get lights in the greenhouse those little lanterns are just little solar powered ones so I need to get some lighting my socket um yeah I'm gonna get electricity put in and then my stove still a few bits but you know what I'm just enjoying like the process and I can't wait for like springtime for my shelves to be full of little seedlings
here is the before of my door. Now my door was originally a white UPVC door and I painted it in Authentico Frozen Fountain Eggshell a couple of years ago. The paint is not the problem, it's just my general door area is grubby, which you can see full of cobwebs and my step is mucky. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get the power washer out. Now, a little tip, when you are painting your door and outside, it's always recommended to do it in warm weather. So try and do this project from late spring to early autumn because it's if you do this in winter, I think there's like too much moisture in the air and your door will take longer to dry. And obviously when you're painting your door, it's going to be open. So you don't wanna have your front door open all day. I am taking off my handles on my letterbox because I actually originally wanted to replace them with new gold ones, but I'm actually going to spray them because I couldn't find in B&Q and I think I went to Woody's, I couldn't find replacement ones. Um, you have to get the ones that has the exact same screw and my screw was underneath. But then my friend Joanne sent me a link to an Irish website that has the handles that would fit my door but I had already kind of sprayed mine. So my plan is to spray the handles in Rust-Oleum's bright cop, bright, not bright copper, sorry, bright gold, and stick them on. And then if they don't wear well, I'll just replace them with the proper ones. So for painting my door, I am popping on one coat of primer and I'm gonna allow that to fully dry. While that is drying, I am going to move on and spray paint my handles. While my handles are drying, I am popping on a colour. This is the same colour that I use on the Ikea Hemnes shoe cabinet. That is as you walk into the door. So this is leftover paint and it's Colour Trends Keystone is the name of it. So it's kind of like a darker green and I'm using an eggshell finish. And the primer I used was also a Colour Trend primer and it's specifically for painting the likes of difficult surfaces. So like MDF and PVC and things like that. So I'm popping on my handle and actually someone said, I actually think it was my friend Joanne again, that gold hardware or like gold on the door is like good for feng shui and it's like, you're, it's like abundance. It's like welcoming abundance into the house. Here is my golden bumblebee knocker. I love this little thing. I'll pop a little link in the description to one if you want to check it out. Now I originally wanted to have this down low but obviously because I have the glass panel in the door and the letterbox it wouldn't fit kind of above or below. So I've had to put the knocker up high and I drilled it in. It's handy enough to drill into PVC door. I actually just used a I think I used a brick drill bit, but it was a really small one and then I screwed it in. And yeah, this is how the door is looking with a fresh lick of paint and my gold hardware. I was playing around with like baskets and trinkets. I do think like I need a wreath, but I think that basket just looked a little bit lost. So now onto tiling the step. These are outdoor tiles. I got them in B&Q. They aren't marked as non-slip which is something I probably should have checked before buying. I bought eight squares and I used six and a half and that was just to allow for trimming and cutting them. So I placed them out first of all to make sure that I had enough and second of all to mark how like where I needed to cut. To cut them I'm using my Ryobi multi, what's it called? A multi a multi-material circular saw. So I use this for, I think, the tiled table project. Um, it's like a mini circular saw, but you can replace the blade for a ceramic one. I did purchase a manual tile cutter and I did not have the patience for it. So um, this Ryobi tool cut through them with a little bit of practice. I'm not a pro at cutting these. Just make sure you put your safety goggles on and yeah, have fun cutting them, but just take care when cutting them. You can adjust the blade as well so that you don't cut into your table. So you can adjust the depth of the cut. So to stick the tiles on, 
I popped my adhesive on, then I sat the tile on top, used little spacers where I needed to, and I let it dry. And just make sure that when you're picking like a grout or adhesive, I picked up a two-in-one, you need to just make sure that it can be used outside um, just because you are tiling your step. And once all of my adhesive was dry, it actually took two days and it did say like 24 hours but I think I made the mistake of using too much adhesive and just be careful not to stand on the step as well while it's drying. So I grouted the step after two days, let the grout settle for about 20 minutes and then I used a sponge that's just soaked in water and I rinsed off any of the excess grout and then I had to go back in the next day. It took me about four days to tile this tiny step and then you just polish up the tiles and then just make sure that everything is setting kind of how it should be thankfully the weather was warm so it was setting quick enough it was just me making the mistake of putting too much adhesive on Okay, let's have a look inside. No judgment, please. So my shed was just full of stuff that half of it I didn't need. It had become a dumping ground, kind of like a lot of sheds. Um, just some old pots of paint that is long gone, long out of date and probably gone hard as well. And then lots of junk, wallpaper table, garden tools, random junk, bits of carpet and lots of spiders. So I had asked my brother if he would help me because I'm afraid of spiders and their cobwebs. But like most ladies, I was impatient and I decided to start emptying it out myself. And then I got my brother to kind of do the harder clearing out. But overall, this is a good size shed. It's actually quite a small shed. I'm not sure of the exact measurements, but it's perfect for what I need. Um, and I don't need everything that is in here. So I started by taking out everything and trying to sort through the stuff that I had, but you'll notice that um, it took me longer because every few minutes I was checking for spiders as I was lifting them out. Now I will say is, there wasn't as many bugs as I thought. It was more just the cobwebs that made it look like there was loads of spiders living there. And by the time my brother actually showed up to help me, I had most of my shed cleared out.
come here. Me and I tell you, seen that bit of carpet. <laughs> oh, one of them ran out and I was like, oh, that bit of carpet is probably riddled with them. I'm gonna, I think, use the shovel or the rake, the rake to maybe rake it out. I don't wanna go in there. Once the shed was cleared out, my brother helped me pull up. There was like some carpet squares um, that were like nailed down. So I got my brother to sweep and clean the inside. So all of the cobwebs and stuff while I kind of sort through the pieces outside and what I was keeping and what I needed to get rid of. I also wanted to open the window back up. The window had been painted over, which I'm not sure if it was like to stop people looking in the shed, but I'm gonna make like a curtain for the window, but I wanted to have the option to be able to see out the window just to add light back into the shed. So I am sorting through all of the stuff that I need to declutter, donate, bring to the recycle bank and then stuff that's not salvageable. So a satisfying task and this bookcase is in absolute bits but I am going to keep it because I think I can recycle it and use it in the shed. Once everything was sorted I decided it was time for a paint job. So I decided to paint my shed in a nice bright neutral colour and I just painted over the green and I'm using Authentic Over Sant Matte Paint. You've probably seen me use this a couple of times especially on outdoor or pieces of furniture and I purchased a new toy which was a spray gun I'll pop a link to the one that I used I just picked it up on Amazon because my local DIY shop didn't have any and there was lots of paint guns with different kind of brand names but they all kind of seem to be the same so I'll leave a link to the one I use and I absolutely love it as you can see my helper is sleeping on the job I didn't have to water down the paint, so I just emptied the paint into the spray gun. I used three liters, and three liters covered the outside and the inside in one coat. So I thought I was gonna have to do two. Now, just when you are painting outdoor furniture or sheds, they drink up the paint. So if it's a cheaper option, maybe you wanna use like fence paint from the shops, um, kind of just see what works best for you you can add a little bit of water but if you start adding too much water and thinning the paint you might lose some of its like properties like the uv shield and things like that but i didn't have to water it down and i gave one coat of paint and i was actually really happy with the coverage as well so this saved my hand so this spray gun gave a nice finish it wasn't too um how would you say spray everywhere I got a little bit on like the window but it was easy enough to wipe off like I thought maybe on a windy day um but it didn't spray everywhere if that makes sense like I was able to kind of control the application
paint job had dried, it was time to put some hooks up and hang the items that I was gonna keep. So I just drilled in some hooks that I had. Um, you can just pick them up in the hardware store, just so I could hang the items and that things weren't kind of like leaning against the wall. I also had an old scaffold board from the wall that was in my garden and I decided to just put this on the side of the shed because it's just giving me like extra room to work. It will look cute with having pots on, but if I need to use it as like a little bench as well um, for potting and things like that. And then just to clear the last of the paint from the window, I'm using some white spirit. It's actually like an eco-friendly white spirit. Um, it does the job, it's really good. And I'm also using a wallpaper stripper to get the last of the paint off. So I have a nice clean window and I can see out. And when I am gonna upcycle some furniture um, for the inside of the shed, I will stitch like a curtain for it so I can pull it over to stop people looking inside. So so to finish this off I decided to cut the grass to make it look nice and tidy and this is how my shed is looking at the moment. I do want to upcycle an Alex unit that I got for free and the bashed billy bookcase so I can make a proper kind of storage area in my shed but this is how it's looking at the moment. Thank you. 